Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Fevs here from Slider. In this video, we are gonna take a look at how to do dependency injection with the most ultimate library in Android, which would be Dagger 2. Before we start, there are two things that I would like to point out. One, if you go to Google and if you type Slidenode dependency injection, we have a post here that covers all the libraries on dependency injection. That would be Butterknife, RoboGuys, Android Annotations, and Dagger 2. The first two videos are right here that cover Butterknife and RoboGuys, whereas the last two are right in your inbox if you subscribe to our email list. In other words, you get an email that includes all the links of dependency injection, comparison between the different libraries, and which one should you use in what situation, not to mention all the code samples for our examples from SlideNerd on GitHub. Be sure to subscribe to our email list. Now let's get back to the topic. So once you have seen the basic videos of dependency injection on slider.com, here's a simple one line explanation that I have to offer. You don't create objects yourselves. You let someone else give you the objects you need. That is called dependency injection. So going to the simple example we have, let's take a look at this diagram. To run the network OK HTTP client, you need an object of type HTTP disk catch. To run retrofit, you need the network OK HTTP client. To run Picasso, you need both the HTTP client and the image catch. So this is how dependencies are formed in terms of a graph diagram. If you take a look at Butterknife, this is the way it works. Now the reason why I've taken Butterknife is to show you something shortly. So take a look at our text views here. We simply use inject view everywhere. And the idea here is simple. You take all the fields with an annotation that would be these three look inside the view group find the view by id cast it to the expected type and then set the field if you remember find view by id requires you to do type casting which is done automatically by butter knife the idea remains similar when it comes to dagger 2 so you will use inject annotation with some object that you need like shared preferences or database you will define something called a component that contains all the places where you need that object and you will construct that object inside your module. Now, if this seems confusing to you, don't worry about it. We will take one step at a time and try to figure out how everything looks like. So the idea remains similar. Take all the fields with this annotation at the rate inject look inside the component. The component is an interface which we will take a look at shortly. Dagger is going to implement that interface and you will decide how to construct or create that object inside something called a module. And again, we will be seeing that shortly. So let's take a simple example that makes everything clear. We have a custom application class here. And let's say you have an object here of type my app component and you simply return that from the application class. So inside your activity, you can get your application by saying this dot get application context, typecast that to my app, which means you get your custom application object and then call the get component method on it. Now using this component object, you can call inject and pass a reference to your my activity. And this reference of your my activity will be used perform the injection that you need. And this is what you see. This is one of the ways of doing it. This is a lot of code, right? There are some shortcuts to this as well. You could write it something like this. You can make a static method inside your application custom class that has a method here called get, which takes a context and you simply construct everything. So inside your activity, since this is a static method, you can directly say my app dot get pass a reference to your my activity as the context here and then call get component and then call inject on this to perform the injection. Another way of doing this would be like this. You simply have a static method called my components directly gives you the object of type component. You just have to pass a reference to your activity which can be done by saying get component this dot inject this to perform the injection. So you're pretty curious by now on what is a component and let's take a look at that you have to answer three questions in dagger remember these three questions very well one which object do you want to inject is it a shared preference is it a database is it picasso where do you want to inject this object that would be the second question that is inside your activity or is it inside your fragment three 
how will you construct this object now these three questions are answered by four things in dagger let's take a look at that which object do you want to inject for this you need to make a method with this annotation at the rate provides that is going to return the object let's say you want to have the application object injected inside your activity so you will simply have a method that returns the application and it has this annotation at the rate provides again we will take a look at the code samples so don't worry if things are a bit uncertain the second question where do you want to inject this object this question is answered in two parts one you use at the rate inject annotation inside your activity or inside your fragment where you're trying to access your application object which is what you want to inject two you have the interface that has this annotation called at the rate component which has methods specifying where you want to perform the injection that is why it says where do you want to inject this object and the third part how will you construct this object that is taken care of again by you by making a class that has at the rate module annotation on top of it and it has your method which you made in step one with at the rate provides in it now if this seems confusing let's take a look at the example straightforward so without using dagger this is what you have everything looks chaotic this needs this this needs this and so on but if you use dagger this is what you have you have the component that has something called a module for everything there's networking module that provides the networking client the api interface there's storage module that provides chat preferences database other things there's application module that provides the application object and they all are linked up with the component and finally you just call inject method to perform the injection in activity or fragment or wherever you want now let's take a look at the real example now the app component is going to answer your second question where are all those places where you want to inject that object do you want it inside my activity then make a method call it whatever you want and pass your reference to the activity here do you also want a fragment here then add another method that accepts your fragment and call it inject now generally people write the name of the method as inject because it makes sense when you're calling it inside your activity or fragment right now remember very well that dagger is the one who is going to implement this interface and it's going to make a concrete class which would probably be called dagger my app component it would be the name of your interface with the word dagger in front of it and we will be using that class to perform di let's take a look at the module part here now you're component simply list all the places where you need that object your module will actually perform the work of constructing the object and dagger will do the rest of the work so here i have said modules equals my app module dot class this simply means that hey this component needs to work with this module to know how to construct the object which i need now if you take a look at the class my app module now this is the class where you perform step one and three which i told you which would be which object do you need in our case that would be my app take a look at the return type of this method that says provide my app you can call this method whatever you want but people usually say provide and then the name of the object that they want to inject so here it says my app provide my app they put at the rate provides annotation here so that dagger knows that look this is the method that provides the application custom class object and there's of course at the rate module annotation at the top here that again is used by dagger to figure out which class is providing that object so the next item in dagger is something called a scope now the question i had as a beginner was wait does it create a new my app object every time does it reuse the same object every time so that is what is defined by a scope when you say singleton then the object is created just once for your application and that same object will be reused everywhere you can also have your own custom scopes like saying per app or per activity where you have one object throughout your activity if your activity uses the same object five times only one of the times the object will be created the rest four times will simply reuse that object but in a different activity you will have another instance of that object being used that would be per activity and there are some other scopes as well that dagger covers let's take a look at the module that provides a rest adapter again 
the method look at that it says provide rest adapter it means that i want a rest adapter object somewhere injected in my fragment or activity so it has the return type of rest adapter it tries to construct it with all the parameters it needs and of course make sure that you take all the parameters from outside in other words you don't build anything inside this method if you're going to need five things to make that object then ask all the five things at the top right here which is the main purpose of dependency injection right and then you say it is at the rate singleton which means a single rest adapter object is going to exist everywhere and notice the name of the class it's api module here we'll be using this class and we have added the module annotation now if you take a look inside your my app from the earlier slides we simply had the get component method the question is how is this component actually created and this is how this class dagger my app component extends that component interface which you guys made earlier you call the builder method on it and then you have these methods like my app module my storage module my network module now these method names are based on the name of your module classes so if you have a storage module then there will be dot storage module method over here inside which you will construct the object of the storage module with all the parameters it needs and simply called build to build your component so the workflow goes like this inside my app module dot class you specified which object do you need and how to construct it inside my app component interface you specified the list of all the places where you need that object now dagger has generated code which is dagger my app component that extends from your interface my app component and for every module class that you had or used over here it simply made a method with the same name with the first letter of course small and then inside that you pass the object of your module and simply called build so at this point let's say you have another module say data module or class then you will be able to access another method called data module inside which you will pass the object of type data module and when everything is done this is what you see in your application component which you saw earlier it lets you do everything linked with all the modules right here at one place which is this dependency that you see over here you can use scopes to decide how often dagger should create the objects like for example if you say per activity scope here that means return a new object for every activity now within the same activity if you try to access that object or create that object 10 times only one of the times it's going to be created the rest nine times are simply going to reuse that same object and you can also use constructor injection with dagger which would look something like this inside your module you would decide which object you want to provide in my case i want to provide the object called my thing so i make a method provide my thing what are all the parameters or objects that my thing needs it needs a shared preferences it needs a context so i take both of them in that method and i create that object over here and i return my thing and i write at the rate provides an addition and you know very well that this method goes inside a module which defines how things are constructed now when i want to use it i can go to say my thing here i can directly say at the rate inject inside the constructor for my thing which is how directly the object will be injected by dagger to see an example of how to use dagger 2 in your code be sure to subscribe to our email list and don't forget to google us out by saying slide nerd udemy where we put up all our courses on udemy we have slide nerd twitter and slide nerd facebook as social accounts and all the code for all the examples it's out there on slide nerd github thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day